starting off, um, Frederick, I just want to um, I just want you to kind of talk through. You've invested in a number of biz like media businesses um, that might once upon a time have had their origins in print media. Um, do you see these platforms as being the new heirs to the traditional media, or are you kind of working in conjunction with them? Uh, should, should you want to ask to use the? Do you want? To? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, now, We've got a few slides just to kind of give you a bit of an overview of what. Just you're... very quickly, and, and also to answer your question. So, Felix Capital is a London-based investment firm um, focused on um, sort of next-generation brands, uh, which typically start with the digital life first, but then sort of you know, blossom with a different um, expression of those, those brands. And typically, we think of brands as communities. So that's you know, part of the answer to your question. So an example of this would be Goop, for instance, which started uh, over a decade ago um, as, a, as a little blog and newsletter. And they, there you can see you know, two illustrations. It's a little blog, but it was founded by Gwyneth Paltrow. So she had a fairly, it, fairly captive audience from the beginning. It, it was a little blog <laughs> that, uh, in a, that but was started, big personality. as she says, in a, on a kitchen table. But it was a big kitchen. <laughs> um, and um, so you've got you know, two, two examples of uh, how, how the brand uh, you know, has a life today. Uh, Goop Cafe, we just had that event in Japan uh, last month. So that was a you know, physical retail slash hospitality space. Uh, this weekend uh, in Los Angeles. We had in Goop Health, which, is, which was an event uh, for the Goop community around wellness. So that's just one example of how to build a, a media uh, business in a different way. Very, quite similar to this event, the business of fashion, which has got its own sort of, uh, I would almost say, competing event. Yeah, far uh, inferior. When, when it comes to, uh, you know, get... Yeah, scoot uh, through that slide, okay. whatever, whatever, whatever. That's so uh, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's business of fashion. It's, it's at the end of November, and you can register online. <coughs> Um, and uh, this is uh, this is high snobiety. So what is interesting about the you know, group high snobiety business of fashion? They all started as little blogs ten years ago. Uh, high snobiety was a sneaker blog started actually fourteen years ago and has blossomed into a, a media business um, about culture targeting young young, young style conscious men. These are you can see you know, many men on that. Uh, on that picture, queuing to uh, buy sneakers. And uh, uh, Eisnobiety will launch commerce uh, uh, actually tomorrow, on the 22nd uh, of May, uh, with our first partner, Prada. So we are building content meets commerce businesses. Other examples of brands we've backed, but starting with um, the media on Instagram, Anina Bing, some of you might know. Uh, Anina was a model turned uh, influence on Instagram and now turned creative director, building a, um, a retail business, both online and through physical stores, including wholesale in Europe and in the US. And another example uh, would be a, um, a brand that also started on Instagram in the jewelry space, uh, targeting you know, the millennial woman under the majority brand. Uh, and last but not least, that's our attempt at creating content at Felix. So that stands in our, in our uh, office. But um, just, just to kind of look at this, so it's 10 years ago, it's bloggers, it's uh, like subsequently um, become more Instagrammers. I mean, in terms of looking for like original points of view, you're kind of scanning digital sp the digital space. Yes, absolutely. And what we are looking for, actually, is we are looking for um, virtual queues. So we look for these physical queues, like you would see you know, people uh, waiting in line uh, to, you know, to buy those sneakers. I mean, queuing is not a very uh, a pleasant experience. So we're always interested to see how people are actually you know, queuing to get, to, 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 to wait to do something, which means that there is passion involved, there is authenticity, uh, and there is you know, a community in action. Um, so we're looking for the digital cues, and we, uh, Instagram, for instance, or YouTube are great places now to look for the digital cues. Um, when we met uh, Majuri, it was a you know, tiny little uh, brand and community with only 50,000 people in, uh, on Instagram uh, two years ago. Now it's like um, half a million today, still relatively small. Um, but the engagement uh, on the Instagram account was phenomenal. A lot of comments, lots of you know, young women tagging their girlfriend and saying, hey, look at this product. Uh, I saw it and I thought of you. So that's what we're looking for online. Engagement. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to what extent are you looking for a, for, for a single voice? I mean, Gwyneth, obviously, is like a very kind of recognizable. She's got a very, very sort of particular point of view. Um, a business of fashion at that time was kind of a curated aggregate of different news stories, but it's very much under the kind of auspices of Imran. Are you are you looking for people or are you looking for brands? Uh, actually, or are they we, the same thing? We are looking for a combination of everything. We would not, in, because you know, we are venture capitalists, so at the end we back people. We don't 
but we, are, we back people where we see that they have the opportunity to build uh, a large business under a brand and create a community. Uh, but we know when we invest that we take a huge risk on the founder. Well, you know, if Gwyneth is not here tomorrow, or Imran, or David at Heisenbaity, the, we have issues. But in the same way, when I first invested in Farfetch uh, nine years ago, uh, the biggest risk we were taking was backing Jose. And right. if something happened to Jose, even though he didn't get it, you know, it, it wasn't his name on the door, uh, you know, we were backing a founder who was able to you know, drive a business and with the success that we've seen. So we take people risk, uh, and we are looking for point of views. Uh, as well as platforms that's more not far-fetched. But yeah, on the brand side, you need a point of view. Um, Alexia, you founded um, System Magazine as a biannual um, seven, seven years ago. I mean, even now, seven years ago seems like a long time in media. And looking back now and thinking about it, that would you wouldn't start a print magazine today, <laughs> that's for sure. Straight up, that's, I mean, the, that's how it would be. It's, it, of course, it evolved so much in the last... Um, You've got your... Yeah. Sorry, whenever you're ready. So, sorry, um, System is a print magazine a little Bible, <laughs> the new one just came out, um, so you're all welcome to go and buy it. I'll show you a couple uh, covers. So this is Nicolas Gesquer. Um, I'll tell a bit the stories because I think it's interesting. Always, uh, he just had left uh, Balenciaga and he had, uh, this was our first issue and um, we started with him and he opened up, we did, a, we did a story on 30 pages of interviews. We met him over the course of you know, six months, about five or six times. Uh, he got sued for this, um, for this article by his former employee, Caring, at the time. So this kind of put us on the map. We went on to, um, to do, you know, all these cover stories. They all have great insight, which I'd love to tell you all about it. But I just want to tell you about, about System. System is, um, you know, it's a, we're a small team, uh, nimble. We're all across the world. Uh, but we are doing a print magazine, although we're very digital, because the only way we do this magazine is through a, a WhatsApp uh, group chat or a Zoom call. So Zoom is really becoming our conference room. Um, we, there's one quote uh, from Stanley Kubrick that I think is very appropriate for what we do. Um, you know, a director is, an, is kind of an idea and taste machine. And, and movies are a series of creative and technical decision. And it's about the director to make as frequently as possible the best decision. I think this applies very much for what we do. And if I can say, you know, uh, what changed in the last 20 years in, in publishing, I would say it's, it's that the fact that magazine is only one component uh, in which you can express your ideas and, 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 and your values. Today, a magazine can be anything. It can be a YouTube channel, a social media account. Uh, it can be a bookstore. We just opened a bookstore in Paris. It can be an event. It can be um, you know, a newsletter. It can be uh, a collaboration with a brand. It can be so many things. So, in terms, of what, in terms of system, though, did you think initially what we're going to be able to do, what the opportunity we're going to get here is to do the sort of deep dive? We're going to be able to do the 30 page story. We're going to be able to do the thing that has, that has an incredible kind of evergreen, la long lasting journalism. Um, or was that just the way that the kind of that the ed editorial ran? I was a little, we were a little bit frustrated with what fashion magazine represented. It was sort of a catalog of imagery with no specific meanings. And you know, I grew up cherishing designers and, and image makers, and we wanted to have the opportunity to show stories that are unedited, that can take six months to do. Also, I think you know, it's not about, you know, we were talking about this earlier, it's not about a print magazine or an app or a website. You know, everything can be a magazine. So it's just you know, the medium more than ever is the message. So you, know, you, you can express yourself using a particular medium because it, it's appropriate to what you want to say. So, you know, when we wanted to do this interview with Nicolas Gesquet, it felt appropriate to meet him, you know, over, uh, you know, five encounters. And the result was a 30 pages interview. Um, but, you know, some, for some other type of, of, of contents, uh, you know, just a tweet. It's is an Instagram also story or whatever. It's, yeah, exactly. exactly. So you're looking at things at across all levels. We, you know, I think we are um, 
you know, we're a very small team and, and we, we aim to punch above our weights, you know. But the thing so. that I find quite interesting about system is that alongside the publication each time, there's usually um, some kind of supplement which is a brand coordinated, like you work very, you work very closely with brands. Um, and that, I think, has been sort of one of the inevitable sort of uh, uh, journeys for most kind of media companies in this day and age. Like, but how do you do it and then retain any sort of authenticity I mean, and, and, and still put a system imprimatur on it without being controlled by them? We heard yesterday um, with Remo talking how important is content for brands today. They need content on a daily basis. They're becoming uh, content, <coughs> sorry, content makers. And so they need publishers. You know, they're not necessarily uh, a team of in-house publisher in each brand. So advertorial and branded content are becoming words that you hear on a daily basis uh, you know, in media brands. And it's not because you work with the brand uh, and, co and collaborate with them that you need to sell yourself to the devil, you know. You can, uh, and we're very ready at System um, to, to tell the brands that, you know, we don't, we disagree with them when they pay for something, you know. We, we usually come out with an idea and we usually go and pitch that idea to the brand and sell that idea. So it's almost like being a kind of advertiser in a way, like you're going, you're pitching for an account and then you go and you say, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it. So it's, it's sort of changed a little bit, so that you're giving them the story and saying, do you want to back this? Um, yes. Yeah. There's very much, like, you know, we, we've been very lucky that in the past seven years, we've done these printed supplements that are usually accompanied by a, a, a social media campaign or a film or, you know, again, anything that could be, a, you know, an event. And, and we've worked with brands like Gucci, with brands like Ikea, uh, right now Saint Laurent, uh, Calvin Klein, each project was very unique, um, and um, and I hope that they haven't been disappointed. I, I, they've paid well, us. Well, they keep coming so back. Yeah, exactly. They keep you've, back, yeah, so. you've done you've done pretty well. So, Shirley, um, you've had a narrative in 2015 to build a machine learning platform that connects products with the content written about them by retailers and publishers, with the aim to take the ad spend away from Google and Amazon. But kind of going back, it was basically, I mean, when you explained it to me, it was the idea that normally when you're reading a, 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 like a magazine piece online or your newspaper, um, you'll go to the hyperlink, you'll click on the hyperlink, it'll take you to the site which was originally linked to, and you'll find the site, the link is broken. Next step, you go to Google search, and their advertising revenue pops off straight there. And brands are, and magazines are, are, are tending to pay Amazon and Google before they kind of think about the ad spend that they're putting in the magazine, despite that being the original source material. Yeah. So that was sort of the genesis of where you began. But then since then, it's sort of become a far bigger battle um, and a kind of like personal campaign. So let, let, let's talk about how you're trying to fix the, um, fix the problem. Yeah, so I can actually frame it in terms of the consumer problem and the, shop, the shopper problem, which we'll all understand. We can talk a bit more about our technology and then the um, industry and like market problem that we see in terms of these large platforms. Um, the consumer platform and th this consumer problem, I think, is something we've all experienced, right? So opening 10, 20, maybe like 30 tabs when you're trying to buy something online. Um, and it's because people are now asking questions of search engines that they used to ask people in store, like store associates. So like, what's the best Father's Day gift? Or if you have a small um, kitchen, what is the best refrigerator? Um, what's the best um, makeup routine or skin routine if you have rosacea? They can be these hyper-specific searches. Um, and the problem is actually that both Google and Amazon were never built for product recommendation. These were platforms that were built in the 90s for price comparison. And all of their database technology is centered around that. Um, so that's where media and publishing actually comes in, right? So there are commerce publishers who are experts in answering these questions. Um, and what we see is that of the 20 billion searches that happen every month, um, the majority are actually in this product recommendation category that media plays into. Um, and um, you know, a couple of examples of you know, the platform failings today, like Google, if you search gift for nephew, there's literally a product that's tagged gift for nephew that shows up because it doesn't understand what you're trying to search for, right? Um, it's missing attributes. Um, if you compare this to any other kind of recommendation engine like Netflix or Spotify, 
Um, the type of uh, recommendation nuance is just completely missing. Um, I think the other piece that we all recognize is just trust, right? So uh, trust of platforms, trust of user reviews that are being generated, trust of um, products, whether they're real or not online. Um, Amazon started doing a lot of advertising recently. You'll see in this example, you're searching for a pillowcase, they're giving you acne products instead for some reason in their, in their return result. Um, and uh, where publishers come in, right, you're, you're essentially playing the role now of that expert store or curator, sales associate online. Um, and you need to be that trusted voice. Um, what we wanna do at Narrative is enable shoppers to find the best products from trusted recommendations in less time. Um, but there's a lot of data infrastructure and machine learning infrastructure that's done in, uh, in building that commerce platform. Um, and there's a lot around macro industry forces in terms of how uh, marketing and advertising dollars are distributed, how ROI and performance are assessed to make that really succeed for publishers. So um, your, advi your advice then basically to a publisher when you go and speak to them is what, what is it that they're not, what, what is it they haven't harnessed and how can you help them? Yeah, so we're, we're first very focused on commerce publishers. There's obviously many other ways to, to make revenue. Um, Number one, we see that about 40% of all the product recommendations that publishers make are out of stock at any given time. And because so much traffic actually comes in through search, the story that you wrote six months ago or 12 months ago is still getting a lot of traffic, but all the links are broken. Uh, so no one's gonna benefit from that. Um, it's, there's a very easy fix around that. Um, we've built a machine learning platform that actually updates and fixes links online. Um, and um, it's something that um, is kind of like uh, low stakes. Um, the next piece is just making sure you get paid um, the most for your content. So uh, if you're recommending a product and let's say six different retailers sell it, um, Google has a very well-known you know, bidding algorithm that would make folks compete and actually pay you the most for that content uh, for the, or for that recommendation, and publishers should do the same. So that's another, another essential piece of the, of the narrative uh, platform. Um, these are kind of two beginning components. There's other pieces that you need to do to be a successful business. We always look to someone like Shopify, for example. They made creating a product and distributing that and being an internet entrepreneur so easy if you're a product maker. Today, if you're a content maker or a product recommender, you're also a storefront. But there's a technology stack that needs to be built to support this type of entrepreneur to get to the same type of potential. Um, so, like looking at like, just the sort of general, like, do we do we see now that kind of the internet as it's, it seems it's very dense. There's a lot of information. We've got to provide a, an awful lot of content, and I think the thing that keeps coming up amidst all of it is trust. This element of like, where do we go to to trust? So, is is it do you see as a, a land as a landscape that it is becoming smaller and more niche as we go on, or is it becoming a broader platform for just? Is it a survival of the fittest, Frederick? Uh, well, actually, you see both happening because you see now amazing platforms. Uh, and today, uh, you, know, you, don't, you, you can be a content creator, you can have a point of view, and you can think of having to build a, a media business and, and uh, you know, uh, first media you know, and content without having to think about distribution. Because that happens on top of YouTube or Instagram or you know, um, WordPress or. Uh, you know, there are so many platforms out there for you to, to express yourself. Uh, and then the, you know, the content and the, the point of view can be you know, as narrow uh, as uh, you know, anyone wants it to be. And uh, you know, I keep on being surprised and you know, all of us in this room by the, you know, the creativity of people and what the, you know, the, the vast universe of uh, content that gets created out there. Um, and that's the beauty of this platform. So they are, obviously, they are, you know, it's a, not a debate, but they are part of very large groups and as a result have a lot of data and, uh, um, and potentially you know, a lot of power as well. Uh, but the tools are there. And on top of this, you can build the relationship with an audience in, uh, in many ways, because you're not wedded to Instagram or to YouTube. You can create you know, physical events, you can have retail stores, you can create, uh, you know, distribute white papers uh, through emails. I mean, you can, you can do, there are so many ways uh, to be a creative today. Um, and some of the companies we've backed actually started as 
uh, not as a business, but as a, started by uh, someone focused on uh, having a passion um, and uh, stay talking about that passion and out build there a community and building around a community. That voice. And once you've got the audience and the community, there are so many ways to build a business on top of it. So that's exactly what we are looking for. When we invested in Group, it was a tiny business, but it was a great brand community, and there, it had, there was like 10 years of brand equity that had been built. Um, so that's a great opportunity out there for all the creators, and it's a really good news because uh, uh, you can, you've got amazing creative talent, you don't have to rely on the FT platform to express yourself. Yep. It can be your own platform. So that's really good news for... Well, we're all uh, little your, brands, aren't we? We're all kind of micro-brands of uh, our own now. Uh, absolutely, and uh, in, that, in that case, you have you know, your brand on. You, know, you will, you will you know, in fact, use Instagram and, and create content yourself, but for FT Fashion Live and, uh, and uh, uh, on, on Instagram and on the FT as well. So there are all of these tools. So that's really good news for creators. I mean, you, you talked about like you know, how you kind of limited the amount of digital kind of you, the, the amount of content that you wanted to provide. But similarly, you're also looking at the next generation and where you're going to go next. So sorry, talk to I, I just wanted to, to talk about the queue and, you know, your fascination for the queue that you said earlier. Uh, one of the cover story we did was uh, Virgil Abloh. Uh, you know, with, um, at the time he was not uh, the creative director of Louis Vuitton, it was prior to that, and we hesitated a lot um, if we should or should not. And what we do as a system is we ask questions. So we decided to ask the questions to our, our audience, you know, and we put in the cover, what is Virgil Abloh? But then we, I think it was in High Snow by T, we, we, we linked it, and um, we linked that we were gonna do a book signing in the local news agents in London, and that went crazy. I mean, I've seen kids waiting for six hours with their poor mother uh, to get you know, their sneakers, their copy of the magazine, anything signed by Virgil Abloh. So it's, it's quite funny because this really shows how you know, uh, a print story uh, in a magazine touched through another website that is not mine and another news agent that is also not yeah. ours. Uh, uh, you know, and every, we, we made everything work together. I feel as so though that collaboration is something that we, you know, ha we haven't touched on it so much, but I think that the lines of communication have got to open between all of us. I think we've all, like, publishers have got to unite against Google's sort of, like, monopoly. I think that fashion houses have to discuss, like, how they're going to tackle sustainability by opening up. I mean, I think we're entering into a new world where this kind of privacy setting idea is, is just not going to work because we need each other to make this work. I mean, surely. Yeah, I mean, to, to answer your question, there's decentralization that's happening, but yeah. I think that can be really powerful, right? So when we think about trust, there's kind of like four types that we, we kind of anchor around. There's legacy, so you built a brand and yeah. that is trusted. Like there's a reason why the New York Times and Wirecutter and Vogue and FT, right? Like you, you have the trust of the reader, right? Um, the second kind is actually around just influence, so it can be celebrity, for yeah. example. Um, it can be around um, influencers that developed over the last 10 years. The third is community, so we, we know about Reddits, right? But there's a lot of kind of like micro Reddits and other types of communities that are 10, 15 million people obsessed about one thing. Um, and then the last piece um, is niche. So. These are communities, so I, I was giving this example earlier, there's, um, there's a, a site online and all they do is swatch makeup against Hispanic skin tones. And there's you know, millions of people essentially who go to the site just for that niche purpose. And there's a lot of trust and, um, and authority in that. Um, and I think when you combine that, uh, that type of authority with collaboration. So not just publishers with each other, but really retailers and brands with these publishers, sharing their data, helping them understand how they can better work together, creating these partnerships, distributing um, product recommendation. That's how you can, uh, that's how you I think you the fudgy bit is just when you get to the point where you're like, are you a, re uh, you know, are, are you, who's paying you? Like who, who, who belongs to who? Like retaining your independence, not taking the buck from people. It's become like certainly in like, in, in like most media organizations, it's a real point of pride that you can't be bought. But I'm thinking it's sort of becoming inevitable that at some point someone's gonna buy us. I mean, I don't know, or we're gonna have to sell ourselves in some way. Like it's just, it's just gonna be very hard to function otherwise. Well, I, in the case of the FT, that already happened, right? Because it's a part of a Japanese group, right? Yeah. So uh, it's, there is always a, somewhere in a, a kind of a, an owner of the business. But I think what today, what you, you have the choice of how to 
build the business in a way like you, know, you have these events, you monetize it, uh, uh, you monetize the brand and the audience through, through live, uh, live events. Um, and you know, increasingly what we see, uh, I mean, news is harder to monetize as a media business, but talking about niches or anyone with a point of view, especially when it relates to fashion, luxury, products in general, let's say, and beauty has seen tremendous uh, transformation. Um, anyone with a point of view on products can go into uh, curation uh, of products, can go into co-creation, co-working with brands. Uh, and if you're familiar with um, someone called uh, uh, James Charles, who is a you know, beauty uh, influencer, who has, uh, you know, my daughters you know, made me buy the James Charles palette. Isn't he trouble? Yeah. Right. Right. That, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> okay, right. We can go into this as well, but that's uh, like, you know, that's social media drama. Um, I can but, believe uh, how little drama there was for such a big drama. But anyway, yes, carry on. Uh, and so that was co-creation of products. Uh, and then after you can go into creation. Uh, so like, you know, Goop launching uh, wellness products or G label uh, as, a, uh, as a brand. So you've got that um, relationship with the community, you've got the, the trust, uh, and then you can offer um, experiences or products. And then as long as it's um, authentic, uh, and as long as it's in line with the, what the brand stands for in terms of taste making, uh, in, in terms of uh, you know, values, uh, there are lots of ways to monetize. So I think that's really good news. You don't have to sell yourself. I think you can have a reinvent media in a, in a very different way. But the, interestingly, though, the, the kind of the business of trust can just as easily be broken. I think the Charles James thing is a very good example of like, you know, you lose three million, you know, three million of your community online because they unfollow you within a kind of 24 hour period. Or we've seen various certain brands like kind of get destroyed, well, get destroyed, but certainly take a massive hit to their reputations overnight. So I think you know, this idea of a kind of a legacy brand that can sort of sit around and, and, and is infallible is, is, now, is, is now more... S in his case, no, he's a one-man band and he's probably making tens of millions of dollars a year. Uh, so his business is, is okay. Yeah. You know, he's taking a, a hit and we'll see, and he's only 19. So uh, on the contrary, I think that's an, uh, the illustration that you can, uh, you can have so much you know, flexibility and uh, there are these you know, amazing tools uh, out there if you have a voice. But you also have to be very careful with how you use that voice. I mean, I don't know whether you think, like, I mean, I look at someone like a big brand like Dolce and the kind of trouble that they had in China, and there's certainly, like, been a, a lack of recovery in, in terms of, like, the, the, the sales in, in store. If for you them. breach the trust uh, yeah. and especially use, you know, social media can be, can be brutal. Uh, because the, you can you know, create content uh, or have someone create the wrong content and the reaction can be global and instant and have a huge impact. So these things are also very fragile. I think trust is at the center of how media can win in this new frontier. Right. Because we know that platforms have broken it already. Yeah. Right? Whether it's Facebook or Google or Amazon, like that's been news over the last you know, two, five years, right? Um, and I think broader participation in advertising and PII and this like hyper targeting of consumer needs to go away, right? Like there's clearly been, um, there's clearly already been a consumer reaction to that. Um, as a brand and, and as a publisher, the, the line has to be around data, I think. So especially in commerce, sometimes you get this reaction of like, oh, I don't want to know if someone bought my product. Like I, I just made the recommendation. This is what I believe. Right. Um, but the same publication will do native advertising, which is just like a paid sponsored content post. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a real, like, there's a tension there, right? Yeah. Like, would you rather know that this product that you recommended didn't do well, so the next time you made a recommendation as an editor online, you could tweak that? Or, and make more money, essentially, from writing that organic content? Or do you want to participate in purely sponsored content that maybe you don't even agree with? Flamming something out that you don't yes, even know about. exactly. I mean, how do you negotiate it? What do, what do you see as being, like, where, where's the next move for system? So, you know, as I said, we, we opened a bookstore now in Paris. Uh, we do tons of white label content for brands. <clears throat> we, we, um, we're now going into the virtual space. So I think the future of system is through the you know, social gaming app that we're about to launch in China very soon. Um, I mean, that's this is something that, we spoke, that was spoken about a lot yesterday. Adrian Cheng said the next day, like, this alpha gen and the, the, the investment they're making in gaming is kind of beyond, and that will be the next area of e-coms opportunity and where luxury is sort of like moving into that space, which sounds like you're on the way. You're going I in there. So. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's, there's so many opportunities. I think you just you know, uh, cannot 
um, hold only one medium. You know, you just need to explore. And in terms of advertising as well, in partnership with brands, you know, there are tons of opportunities. You just have to, you know, we have tons of opportunities through events. And again, uh, here is the proof of that. We do so much with, you know, with event uh, offline uh, type of activities, podcast. Um, also is a great uh, great tool yeah so you know what we do here is 10 stories and then we just try to translate them in er any myriad form yes there's one piece around gaming that I think is very specific um, I saw an interview with Jack Ma and they asked him like what's the one thing you're happy you never did right and he said it was gaming hmm. and it came up a lot Happy that he never played games. That, he, that Alibaba like, never built games. Right, right. Because as a distribution platform, it easily could have made a lot of mm -hmm. money. And I really believe in AR and like and entertainment and all of that. Um, but I think there's something that media publications haven't um, appreciated, which is you can be useful and helpful and not addictive, and that can be a good thing. Right. Um, and we're seeing more and more around how large platforms can be psychologically damaging, right? right. Especially for children. Um, and that these addiction patterns and all of the words that we use around successful platforms are not beneficial to people. And I think in the next decade, next you know, 20 years, we'll see more and more regulation around the amount of time that you can spend doing some of these behaviors online. It's good for magazines. It is, yes. Um, if you were going to offer a media company any three takeaways that would safeguard them for the future, what would they be, or even one? Maybe actually just one, which is to think about the value of your business as uh, the audience and the community and the trust that you've built with that audience, um, as opposed to necessarily the, uh, the physicality of the paper of the magazine. So there are a lot of ways to engage that audience and then to, as a result to, you know, to build business lines, whether you, you, know, actually you are in print or you do you know, stories through Instagram or you do products or you do events or podcasts um, or, or, or whatever. And the key is to uh, continue to feed that audience with something relevant uh, and, and then re really reverse the um, the you know, thing about the business is not about you know, what I produce, but what's you know, the. It's all about the um, you know, that audience and how I can continue to be relevant to them, as opposed to I create content and might find an audience. Uh, uh, and, it's so, and it's the same advice to uh, retailers today. Yeah. Uh, so it's less about owning products and having them on the shelf. Uh, it's about uh, connecting, connecting them to connecting someone who who trusts the brand, whether it's. Uh, uh, you know, an LVMH or luxury brand or you know, Tesco, or, but uh, offer a product uh, and that product may, may be sitting on someone else's shelf. Alexia, do you, for, do you, how confident are you for the future of a print magazine like this appearing in sort of 10 years' time? Um, I think I will end with um, our colleague, Laura Brown. So in, in this uh, next issue of System, totally randomly, we did a big story on uh, the future of print and we asked all the editor-in-chiefs of the industry to comment and everybody participated and it's a very interesting survey. And Laura Brown said, if I had a dollar for every PR pitch that ends with, online's great, but what we really want is the print. So I can totally relate to this because we obviously uh, you know, work a lot with brands and it's always the same story. And I think you have something quite interesting to say about well, I mean, that as I was well. Say, I was just saying that it's always, always interesting to me that we have all these platforms, we have all these kind of like, n like dialogues with people, but when people get the piece written about them in the FT, the first thing they do is they take a photograph of the newspaper and they put that picture on Instagram. And it's like always, they're kind of like, there's something about it, the halo effect of like the paper. As opposed and to the link. God bless it, quite frankly, because you know, we need everyone to keep doing it. But um, yeah, thanks everybody. Hope Hopefully we've provided a bit of insight into how to safeguard media Thank for the you. future. Thank you. Thank you.